Hans Chemistow Fight Hike.com here with Tio Fimos Lopez Sr. How you doing tonight, man? Man, I'm just lounging and having a great time tonight. Um, what is it? It's Tuesday. Well, it's a little bit, uh, I think it's already Wednesday, but um, we're having a great time. We just finished uh, doing a little workout with, uh, with the champ, and um, we're ready, man. Mentally, physically, everything. You know, would love to know, um, your son has only had two fights at 140 pounds. Um, got the stoppage. Two fights that he already won. Good point. <laughs> he got the stoppage win against Camper, um, and then he picked up a close decision win against Sandor Martin. No, it was a close decision because of the commentating. You got to just turn the, the commentating off and watch the fight in real time, and, and you'll see who won that fight convincingly, well, you know? Well, what I wanted to say was um, a lot of people are saying that T.O. hasn't looked as good at 140 as he has at 135. Bro, listen, what do you expect when my son almost died the night that he fought Cabosas? He had a hole. He had a tear in his in his lung he had a tear in his throat and he fought 12 rounds like that well you know I, and I, I, I mean like uh, the boxing world I mean we had to do about a hundred tests that time because they wasn't allowing him to fight again because of his condition um, he was in the hospital for more than a month um, you know he wasn't stable you know and um, and we're back, bro. That's what I gotta say, you know. And my son was not, my son hasn't been 100% ever since that fight. And you gotta give him credit for that because, you know, um, I he already told everybody, you know, my son, the only the only way my son is gonna lose is to health. Because he's, a, he's an asthmatic kid. And that's what happened that night. Is your son 100% healthy right now? Oh, he is, he is. Um, uh, we got no excuses. Bro, listen. When we fought Combosis that night, not only he had a, a, a tear in his lungs and in his throat, he also had a broken elbow. And, um, you know, but I don't put excuses for things like that. But, you know, if you don't have no lungs, you can't do any sport. You know, so, you know, I, I, I right now, as we speak, he's at 100% condition right now. No injuries. Thank God that everything well went well in sparring. He did amazing in sparring, and um, he did not get hurt. And right now, we're a few days to the fight, and, um, you know, I'm 100% sure we're going we're gonna to win that night. Why do you think right now is the right time for your son to fight Josh Taylor, man? Because um, it took a while. It took a while for him to feel it. You know what I'm saying? I see. I seen him inspiring. He's been doing amazing. And um, come Saturday night, June 10th, don't miss it. The biggest fight of the year. You know, two undisputed uh, champions fighting. And the guy that, that gets crowned that night, which is going to be my son, is going to be two-time undisputed world champion. Um, what are your thoughts on Josh overall as a fighter, and do you still consider him the best guy at 140, not not in including your son? Listen, we wouldn't be fighting him if he wasn't the best. You know, uh, my son always looks for the best. He always looks. He always. My son always looks for the challenge, and this is the guy that got everything that we want. And um, it's not too late. It's not too early. You know, his. This is his 20th fight. And um, and we want to get the best. We want to get the best, and Josh Taylor is the one on, on top of the list. And after this fight, my son will be king at 140, uh, at the 140 weight division. He already did it at 135, and we want to do it at 140. Are you surprised that a lot of people are counting your son out? A lot of people are taking Josh Taylor. Well, listen, fight? man, that's that's what it takes, man. This is what it's all about, you know. Uh, nobody takes the challenges that my son takes from all the young guys that are coming up in the game. We are the only ones taking the risk, you know, because we don't care about no freaking z uh, zero losses. You know, um, these uh, the days right now, you know, the modern age right now uh, of fighting is like you can't lose, you know, like like um, one of my mentors, one of the guys that I love a lot in the sport is Floyd Mayweather. And he put the stakes so high that you cannot lose in this sport, you know, but sometimes, you know, um, things happen, things happen, you know, um, and and I tell you right now, uh, out of a hundred times, my son would be Combosis right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, it just happened to be that that day, 
you know, they postponed, they kept on postponing and postponing the fight like seven, eight times, and and that's what happened, you know what I'm saying? He couldn't make the weight no more, and, and, and we paid for it. But right now, it's just a new era, it's a new time, it's, 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 it's the time right now to take over boxing. After this fight, my son is the king of boxing, without a doubt. So you believe he'll be the face of boxing, not Tank, not Canelo? Bro, how you gonna be the face of boxing when you don't have no freaking belts? My son is five-time world champion, you know? Tank Davis only got one belt at 130, and people don't understand that. The only belt he got it was you, against Your son Madrasa. is already the king of boxing. Of course he is. He already of course is the he king is. of boxing. Of course he is. You see, we got fans over here already coming up to me and talking to me. You know, because that's the way it is. And we're going to show the whole world who my son is. And come June 10th, bro, you're going to see something nobody has ever seen. And you know what that's called? It's called fucking entertainment. Entertainment, baby. So it, it's not June 10th officially just yet. Um, so who would you say is the face of boxing? Would you say it's still Canelo right now? Would the you face of boxing Canelo? right now is Canelo. Okay. After June 10th, it will be Teofimo Lopez, without a doubt. When you know, two times undisputed. Doesn't matter. We beat the man that is the man at the weight division. We beat Loma when Loma was what at 135. He was the man. He he was considered number one pound for pound or number two or number three. No matter how you freaking like shovel it up, that was the man to beat. And we beat him at his prime. He just had a fight with Devin Haney and, 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 and you know, about three that. years we're, later. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that. One second. When when you go to sleep at night, man, how exactly do you envision the fight playing out? Do you just see your son winning every round, or do you see your son eventually just getting that stop? I see my son winning every round. You know, we're gonna adjust to him right away from the beginning when the bell rings. Um, you're gonna see an entertaining Lopez. You're gonna see the best Lopez that everybody has, that nobody has ever seen. And and you know we're gonna bring boxing back, man. We're gonna freaking entertain the world. We're gonna entertain the crowd and. People pay for this, man. People pay for this. There's lots of that, there's a lot of lives involved into this game, and that's what we're gonna bring. Come June 10th, we're gonna bring excitement. We're gonna give the crowd their money's worth. Don't want to look ahead too much, but you know, let's say your son does beat Josh Taylor. Um, what do you think is kind of like the logical next move for him? Listen, from there on, we just looking. My son has always been looking for for the belts. We always want the belts. So that's what we're doing. We're chasing belts. But if, you know, if a fight with Ryan Garcia happens or a fight with uh, with Tank Davis happens, we can make it happen, you know. You already heard John, um, Floyd Mayweather saying that he wants, you know, the fight with, um, he said that the best fight will be, you know, Tank against my son. And I think that will be a mega fight. And those are the fights we're looking for now. You know what I'm saying? Do you look at... We, like, hey, for, to tell you the truth, bro, we don't even have to go looking for nobody else. Once we beat Josh Taylor, we beat the man. You know? When you when you look at Tank, man, um, I know you respect his skills, um, but do you look at Tank and say, okay, that's the one guy that can give my tr give my son the most trouble never, in the ring? Never, because uh, my son already faced uh, Tank when he was only 15 years old. And Tank was about 30 pounds bigger than him, and you know, when we sparred him. And, and my son, you know, did really good with him. Um, even though, you know, cause Tank at that time, you know, should I work with my son? And he wasn't even working in that, in that sparring session. My son was about 30 pounds smaller than him. Tank already was six and all with six knockouts. And my son was still an amateur. My son was only 15 years old, Tank was 18. You know, and anybody that wants to see that sparring match, man, they could go to YouTube and put Teofimo Lopez against Tank and you'll see the video, you know, and um, so there, you know, to me, he I worked in boxing. You know, the way to beat Tank, you gotta box him. You gotta box him. You gotta be, you know, Tank is scared of the boxers. He's scared of uh, the guys that know how to box. Those so are the guys he's scared of. There's nothing that Tank could bring to the ring against no, him. No, Tank is a fucking you... monster, no. Okay. Tank is a monster. I respect Tank. He's got a powerful left hand. There's nothing that you could take away from Tank. That's why he's on top of the game. And, you know, he needs to face challenges. He needs to get a team out there that's, that pushes him to fight the real guys. You know what I'm saying? And I think that I think that Tank is in that position right now where he starts realizing that he could do better than to just choose and pick who he's fighting next. 
I think Tank is already a, a, a world champion in, in the sense that he doesn't need to baby his next fights. He, you know, he needs to go to the top dogs now. And we're right, we right there, we're waiting for him. And I think that I want him right after this fight. I want Tank, I want the Ryan Garcias, I want the Tanks. I want what the money's at. And that's what my son wants. You know, um, speaking of Tank, um, normally your, your son is a really good boxer, but he loves getting the knockouts. Um, you love it when your son does get the knockouts, but you did just say that if you, if you fight Tank, you have to box him on the outside. So would you No, kind of, I didn't say that we, well, well, you we said that you said on Tank, the outside. You said Tank said gets nervous. You said Tank has trouble with the boxers. Exactly. So well, you could you, be a boxer and still box in the inside, you know what I'm saying? So, so would you kind yeah. of instruct your son to, yeah. you know, more so yeah. box Tank instead of just standing there and brawling? Or do you Listen, think your son listen, can knock my him son out. can stay right in the front pocket and box you. You know, box the shit out of you. You don't gotta be fucking running or nothing, yo. You know what I'm saying? Um, the thing that I know right now is like my son is in a better position. I was like, bro, listen, as a coach, I tell you right now, I was screwing him up. I was screwing him up. I was doing things that wasn't right and that was messing up his game plan. I'm not gonna mention what I was doing wrong, but you know, we fixed it. And that's why my son is still with me, because my son understands that I always find a solution to all the problems. And I found a solution to how to beat Josh Taylor this time. And just like I did with, um, with, um, with Loma, the same thing that I did with Loma, I'm doing right now with Josh Taylor. Before I, I, I talk about you for one second, do you think your son can and will stop Tank if they fight? Yes, 100%. I mean, I, this is, you know, listen to me. If you talk about the young guys that are coming up in the game or, or in the sport right now, okay, who has the most difficult times? You got Shakur, you got Devin Haney, you got, you know, Tank, you got all these guys, right? Tank already fought at 140, so he already got tested, so he already knows how that feels. But what's going to happen with your core? What's going to happen with Devin Haney? These guys that don't pop. These guys that don't pop a cherry. These guys that have problems knocking people out. What's going to happen with them? They got to face these guys at 140. And you got monsters out there, bro. You got like the, the Pro Grayers, you know. You got, you know, you got all these guys up there at 140. The Josh Taylors. You got all these guys that, you know, that, that crack. So... We don't gotta worry about that because we already been tested twice. You know, Sam Martin was no fucking pushover, bro. Sam Martin beat fucking Mikey Garcia. One of the most explosive fighters at the 140 weight division, knockout artist with that left hand of his. And you're gonna tell me that, that Sam Martin was in the challenge for my son? Of course he was. You know what I'm saying? And he must have felt something in that fight because he never committed. You know, he didn't. He never did what he did with freaking uh, Mikey Garcia because he felt that power. You know, the same thing with Loma. Loma felt that power. You know, and and we cannot make people fucking. You know, we can't make people fight us. If they run, it's because they feel something. You know, and and come June 10th, you people are gonna see what we're gonna do to Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor is not a person that's gonna run. Um, so let, that's a real fight right there. Let me ask you about, um, cause you just said that um, you were doing things that were messing up your son's game plan and not going, oh, yes, big not, time, big not time, going into time. details. Big you said you don't want to go into details, big time. but um, would love to know, was it difficult for you because um, like you said, you came up with a game plan to beat Loma. You won trainer of the year. You helped your son become, you know, essentially undisputed. I Yo, guess, listen, I guess if, it if people don't understand this, I was the only one that was able to figure out Lomacheco. But that, out of but like 400 I'm, amateur fights that he had and all these coaches that he had, he must have had hundreds of coaches. I was the but, only one but that's that was of what able, I'm, I was the only one that was able to find out, but, you know, but his what weakness. I'm to, what I'm trying to ask you is, was it hard for you to go back and say, okay, I know I, I helped my son so much. Was it hard for you to go back and be like, okay, I got to get better as a coach? Was it difficult for of you? Of course, yes, yes, because I was, I don't want to go into details, but I was like, I, I was coaching him, and you know, and, and right after the combos, right at, right after the combos fight, I was just telling him the wrong things, you know. But then I came and I figured it out, and 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 thank God it happened 
And this happened like, a, like about two, three weeks right into camp, uh, training camp for, for Josh Taylor. And, and I thank God that it happened like three weeks right after the camp because, you know, he already got it. He already knows what he has to do, and we fixed it. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. And you're gonna be, you're gonna see the most entertaining Teofimo Lopez yeah. you ever seen in boxing. And gotcha. you know, I can't wait for these people to see this fight because it's gonna be glorious, man. I mean, this kid is just gonna entertain the whole crowd that night, and and everybody's gonna know why he's so, you know, why he's so gifted. I gotcha. took his gift away. You um, know what I'm saying? But I brought it back.